How would you answer that question? I encourage you to take a few minutes today and reflect on it. How, if somebody asks for what is truth, what would you say? Because I think to most of the people in the world today, there is no such thing as truth, universal truth. In other words, something that's true here is true if you're back at home, it's true today, it was true 2,000 years ago, it be true 2,000 years in the future. Most of the world today, they don't believe in universal truth. They believe what we call relative truth. What could be true now in a certain situation may not be true maybe 10 days later or in a different situation. I remember when I started the seminary, because I didn't have a degree in philosophy or theology, we had to do a year of philosophy. And one of our classmates, he had a problem in believing in universal truth. He would always say, there is no such thing as universal truth. Now, by the fact he's saying this, he's contradicting himself because he's saying that's a universal truth, that there is no universal <laughs> truth. And I, he did not you know, continue in the seminary because he had a problem with that concept of the universal truth, that truth. Jesus tells us in the gospel today, that God's word is the truth. Well, if, that's, if we believe that, then first, are we familiar with God's word? Do we read God's word? If we want to live in the truth, because Jesus tells us and prays that we will be consecrated men and women in the truth, we need to know the truth. You know, this is part of Jesus' long prayer for unity before he's uh, handed over to be crucified. What unites us is the truth, because we're different people, we live in different times, different worlds, we have different issues and problems that we deal with, we have different blessings, but our common denominator <coughs> should be the truth. And Jesus said, I am the truth, the way, and the life. Not a truth, not the truth to this time for the Jewish people, but he's the truth at every place, at every time, for everyone. And he calls, he prays for us to live the truth. Just think how life would be much simpler if we all knew the truth and lived by the truth. It might not be easy, but it might, might be much simpler. Because a lot of times we're struggling on what to do, we say we don't know what the right thing to do. Well, we can find out the right thing to do if we want to, but most of the time we don't want to do what is true. Because sometimes it's difficult, sometimes it's costly. Obviously, it was for Jesus. But the truth is not only found in the Word of God. Because as you know, our Protestant brothers and sisters, they go by the scriptures only. And if there's one scriptures, one word, or set of words, how come there's so many denominations? Because they all explore, understand or the truth in their own different way. As a church, Catholic church, we're blessed to have the teaching of the church, the magisterium of the church that help us to understand the truth at all times, help us to interpret the word. You know, the words of scripture, at least the New Testament, it took at least 20 years before Paul began to write his letters. The gospel, the gospel of Mark was written 30, 40 years after Jesus' resurrection to heaven. There was no gospel for the first 40 years, so that does mean there was no truth. No, the truth was there. And it was in the lived Christian community of the time. That's what we call the tradition of the church, tradition with big T, how the disciples who heard the words of Jesus understood what he meant. They had the truth. The truth later on was written down. And when we look at those two sources of revelation, the word of God, and the tradition, the teachings of the church, that's how it can help us to understand what is the truth in our times and days, what it does it mean to us. And we as a Catholic, sometimes we don't appreciate that. We don't appreciate this gift and blessing that God has blessed the church with. Jesus tells his apostles, you are consecrated in the truth. Because if we don't have the truth, then how can we follow Christ to heaven? We don't know which way to go. The church helps us to understand the truth. 
the church meant to encourage us, to give us the strength, support us, so we can live the truth. Because as you know, it's not easy. So as we prepare to celebrate the Feast of Pentecost, the birth of the church, let us ask the Holy Spirit, maybe especially for two gifts, the gifts of understanding of the truth, so we can live it, and then the gift of courage, so we can be willing to bear the cross as we live the truth.